In this talk, we'll review important highlights from a 2014 paper published by El Sharif and his colleagues in Radiographics and an iOS app created by three of the paper's authors, available for free in the App Store. With lung cancer, three important responsibilities radiologists have are to detect it when it happens, to help stage it, and to reassess patients post-treatment. Staging lung cancer means describing its extent or spread, which allows us to establish a patient's prognosis and guide their treatment plan. The TNM system is a standardized method for categorizing the extent or stage of lung cancer spread in patients on a scale of 1 through 4, based on a combination of the primary tumor's characteristics, the extent of regional lymph node involvement, and the presence or absence of distant metastasis. The primary tumor, or T category, is scored on a scale of 1 to 4 and based on the size of the primary tumor and extent of invasion into adjacent tissues. The regional lymph node, or N category, is scored on a scale of 0 to 3 and based on the anatomical extent of lymph node spread. The distant metastasis, or M category, is scored on a scale of 0 to 1 and based on the presence of distant metastasis, including malignant pleural or pericardial effusions. There are lettered subdivisions of the T1, T2, and M1 categories, in addition to the four tumor stages. Different combinations of T, N, and M category scores correspond to different lung cancer stages, which makes establishing the appropriate N category score important which can sometimes be tricky on CT. Let's start with a brief overview. If a patient has a primary lung cancer with no lymph node spread, the patient is N0. If lung cancer has spread as far as an ipsilateral hilar lymph node, that's N1. If lung cancer has reached an ipsilateral mediastinal lymph node, that's N2. And if it's reached a contralateral mediastinal lymph node, that's N3. Subcarinal lymph nodes are always scored N2, regardless if you're dealing with a right-sided lung cancer or a left-sided lung cancer. So they're effectively always ipsilateral mediastinal lymph nodes. Contralateral hilar lymph node spread is N3, and spread to a low cervical lymph node is also N3. Spread of lung cancer to other lymph nodes beyond this direct lymphatic watershed are treated as distant metastases. For example, Lung cancer spread to axillary lymph nodes are M1, as would lung cancer spread to diaphragmatic lymph nodes, intercostal nodes near the costovertebral junctions, and internal mammary nodes in the anterior chest. This brings us to the main subject of this talk. But why should you care? What's so important about a map? Here's an analogy. Let's say you have a school-aged child. How do you know which public school they go to? or if today is a snow day when you're listening to announcements on the radio. Well, based on the knowledge of your child's location, a school district map would answer these questions. Now, let's say you have a patient with lung cancer. There is a lot of lymph nodes this lung cancer could potentially spread to, like this one. What do you call this lymph node when discussing it with other specialists so there's no miscommunication? Also, is it mediastinal? or hyler. Because if you're wrong, the patient might get misstaged. What if there's another suspicious but indeterminate lymph node here? Is EBIS an appropriate option to sample it? Just like a school district map, a well-designed lymph node map can help answer these sort of questions. And the one we currently use was created over 10 years ago by a group called the International Association for the Study of Lung Cancer, or IASLC. The IASLC lymph node map divides regional thoracic lymph nodes into 14 named and numbered districts or stations. Some of these stations are subdivided into right and left. Here's a list of all 14. Subsegmental lymph nodes are lymph nodes we find next to the subsegmental bronchi, also numerically designated as station 14R on the right and 14L on the left. Segmental lymph nodes are next to the segmental bronchi, station 13R on the right and 13L on the left. 
Lobar lymph nodes are next to the lobar bronchi, station 12R on the right and 12L on the left. Interlobar lymph nodes sit between the origins of the lobar bronchi, station 11R on the right and 11L on the left. Hyalur lymph nodes abut the main stem bronchi and hyalur vessels, in addition to the proximal portions of the pulmonary veins and main pulmonary arteries, station 10R on the right and 10L on the left. Subcrinal lymph nodes are inferior to the crina of the trachea, station 7. Paraesophageal lymph nodes live inferior to the subcrinal station, next to the esophagus, station 8. These are unofficially subdivided into 8R and 8L by some people. Pulmonary ligament lymph nodes lie within the pulmonary ligaments, station 9. These are also unofficially subdivided into 9R and 9L by some people. Lower paratracheal lymph nodes are next to the lower trachea, station 4R on the right and 4L on the left. Upper paratracheal lymph nodes are next to the upper trachea, station 2R on the right and 2L on the left. The intersection of the left brachiocephalic vein's inferior margin with the trachea is the boundary we use to distinguish upper from lower paratracheal lymph nodes on the right side while the upper margin of the aortic arch is used as the boundary between upper and lower paratracheal lymph nodes on the left side. Retrotracheal lymph nodes are immediately posterior to the trachea, station 3, P. Subaortic lymph nodes are in the aortopulmonary window and lateral to the ligamentum arteriosum, station 5. Paraaortic lymph nodes are immediately anterior and lateral to the ascending aorta and aortic arch, station 6. Moving into the anterior mediastinum, prevascular lymph nodes are in the anterior chest, anterior to the SVC and left carotid artery, station 3A. These are unofficially subdivided into right and left by some people. And finally, low cervical lymph nodes are in the lower neck, superior to the clavicles, manubrium, and thoracic inlet, station 1R on the right side and 1L on the left side. 14 stations can be a lot to wrap your head around at first, so it's important to see the forest for the trees and understand first and foremost what you need to take away from this lymph node map to be able to reliably distinguish N1 from N2 cases and N2 from N3 cases. That means being comfortable with five tasks. Number one, can you reliably distinguish subcrinal station 7 mediastinal lymph nodes from other mediastinal lymph nodes on a CT? Number two, can you reliably distinguish right hyalur and perihyalur station 10R through 12R lymph nodes from right mediastinal lymph nodes on a CT? Number three, can you reliably distinguish left hyalur, perihyalur station 10L through 12L lymph nodes from left mediastinal lymph nodes on a CT? Number four, can you reliably distinguish low cervical station 1 lymph nodes from upper mediastinal lymph nodes on a CT. And 5. Can you reliably distinguish right mediastinal from left mediastinal lymph nodes on a CT? Let's begin with number 1. What's subcrinal in the mediastinum and what's not? Three landmarks define the territory of the subcrinal station. The crina, the upper margin of the left lower lobe bronchus, and the lower margin of the bronchus intermedius. These circumscribe the subcrinal station. If you scroll inferiorly on a CT and encounter the crina, the subcrinal station will begin on the next slice, extending all the way laterally to the walls of both bronchi up to the cardiac space anteriorly and the esophagus posteriorly, until you reach the origin of the left lower lobe bronchus, after which the subcrinal station territory drifts rightward, and stopping after you reach the end of the bronchus intermedius. When is a lymph node right hyalur versus mediastinal? Right hyalur lymph nodes are adjacent to the right main stem bronchus and hyalur vessels. The boundary between right hyalur and right mediastinal nodes is defined by the right main stem bronchus origin, the inferior margin of the ascus, 
and the interlobar region at the origin of the right middle and lower lobe bronchi. These landmarks define the medial border of the right hilar station. If you scroll inferiorly on a CT, the right hilar station begins as soon as you pass through the inferior margin of the azygous, and it extends medially up to the origin of the right mainstem bronchus. Abutting the subcranial station and ending after you reach the bifurcation of the bronchus intermedius. When is a lymph node to left hilar versus mediastinal? Left hilar lymph nodes are adjacent to left mainstem bronchus and hilar vessels. The boundary between left hilar and left mediastinal lymph nodes is defined by the left mainstem bronchus origin, the upper margin of the left pulmonary artery, and the interlobar region at the bifurcation of the left mainstem bronchus. These define the boundaries of the left hilar station. If you scroll inferiorly on a CT, the left hilar station begins as soon as you see the left pulmonary artery, and the left hilar station extends medially up to the origin of the left mainstem bronchus, abutting the subcranial station and ending after the bifurcation of the left mainstem bronchus. When is a lymph node lower cervical versus mediastinal? Low cervical lymph nodes are located in the lower neck and not the chest. The boundary between the neck and the chest is the thoracic inlet, and the thoracic inlet is an oblique plane defined by the superior margins of the first ribs, which makes the territory in purple on this image neck and the territory in light blue chest. Since an axial CT image obliquely transects the thoracic inlet plane, lymph nodes anterior to the portions of the right and left first ribs of an axial, on an axial image are in the neck. So if you take the first ribs on a CT image and draw a line through them, anything anterior to that line is in the neck or low cervical station. Low cervical station ends when you reach the superior margin of the manubrium. It's very important to know how to distinguish right mediastinal lymph nodes from left mediastinal lymph nodes. Upper and lower paratracheal lymph nodes extend from the thoracic inlet to carina. The left lateral wall of the trachea is the boundary between right and left paratracheal lymph nodes. At the tracheal bifurcation, the midline tracheal bifurcation is used since there's no left tracheal wall in this area. Parasophageal lymph nodes extend from the level of the left lower lobe bronchus origin to the diaphragm. The midline esophagus is the boundary between right and left for these lymph nodes. Remember, subcrinal mediastinal lymph nodes are always ipsilateral. So this is what the boundary between right and left middle mediastinal lymph nodes look like. If you scroll inferiorly on a CT and enter the chest, use the left lateral tracheal wall to distinguish right paratracheal nodes from left paratracheal nodes. Since retrotracheal lymph nodes are posterior to the trachea, and the entire trachea basically lies on the right side of the left tracheal wall, retrotracheal lymph nodes are right mediastinal nodes. Once the trachea bifurcates, the midline tracheal bifurcation serves as our boundary between right and left lower paratracheal stations for a few images until you reach the carina and enter the subcranial station. Since subcranial nodes are always ipsilateral mediastinal, we don't describe subcranial nodes as right or left-sided. Once you reach the left lower lobe bronchus origin, the right left mediastinal boundary reappears, but now runs along the midline esophagus. Un continuing until you finally reach the diaphragm. 
Prevascular lymph nodes in the anterior mediastinum are unofficially divided between right and left by some people. Prevascular nodes exist from the thoracic inlet to the carina. The midline trachea can be used to define right prevascular nodes from left prevascular nodes. If you scroll inferiorly on a CT and enter the chest, you'll encounter prevascular lymph nodes in the space anterior to the carotid artery on the left side and SVC on the right side. As you move through the chest, use the midline trachea to distinguish right prevascular from left prevascular lymph nodes. The prevascular station ends once you've reached the level of the crina. One brief comment about lymph nodes that are located immediately anterior to the tracheal bifurcation. These lymph nodes are not right hilar or left hilar, and they're also not subcarinal. Although you sometimes hear the term precarinal used, precarinal is not an official IASLC lymph node station. Instead, it's best to call these right lower paratracheal 4R and left lower paratracheal 4L lymph nodes. These are the right and left lower paratracheal stations, and they continue inferiorly to the tracheal bifurcation, extending laterally up to the hilar stations, and finally ending when you reach the carina, where the subcarinal station will begin. There's one last important issue to tackle. How does a radiologist decide to call a regional lymph node positive? Long story short, there is no foolproof way. One option is to use the short axis diameter of a lymph node and some sort of threshold, like say 10 millimeters. Although short axis diameter is pretty objective, it's not a reliable discriminator of malignant versus benign. In a 2003 study, Three quarters of patients who were definitively N0 by surgical lymph node sampling had at least one lymph node over one centimeter in short axis diameter. At the same time, one in eight patients who were definitively N1 or N2 by surgical lymph node sampling did not have a single lymph node over one centimeter in short axis diameter. FDG uptake on PET imaging tends to be a little better but not without its share of false positives and false negatives too. So it's not surprising that direct sampling is sometimes required. Many sampling options are available, but no single option works for all 14 different regional lymph node stations. This chart is a nice reference that tracks which methods work for which lymph node stations in the chest. It's also a nice reminder why it's sometimes handy to know how to distinguish every lymph node station from another.